Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, isn't it strange to consider that the PlayStation 4 is technically last generation? But the benefit for gamers and collectors like us is that we can get access to some of these games for super cheap now because they've been out for a while. So in this video, I want to share 10 games that are relatively known and also some that might be a little lesser known, but all of them you can get for $10 or less. Let's take a look. So I'm going to start with Uncharted The Lost Legacy, but the truth is you should play all of the Uncharted games because they're all excellent and they're all available on the PlayStation 4, uh, especially the uh, the Uncharted Collection 1, 2, and 3 were remastered for PlayStation 4 and you can pick that up for, I believe, $10 from GameStop. But I want to talk about The Lost Legacy because I feel like, well, it kind of got lost. I believe this game was designed to be DLC or an expansion pack to Uncharted 4, but it became a full-blown release after Uncharted 4 came out. And here's the thing, in this game you don't play as Nathan Drake because all of the story elements of Nathan Drake's story were resolved in the fourth game. So in this one you play Chloe, who is a side character. I believe you're introduced to her in the second game and she's one of my favorite characters. But uh, in this game, you pretty much just play as her and her friends and you are going on her, her quest to kind of follow in the footsteps of her father to get this elephant tusk, this ancient relic um, in India. And what's cool about this game is that, again, it's her story, her personality, and all the people that surround her, but there is no compromise to the quality of this game. Uh, the gameplay is still excellent. As you can see, the graphics are amazing. The characters are witty and funny and very personable, and some of them you hate just as much as the other games. And what's nice about this game, especially in hindsight, is that it is a smaller affair compared to the other games, which, you know, I, hey, don't get me wrong, I love the Uncharted games. Uh, Nathan Drake and his pals are awesome. However, each one of those games, when you go back and play them now, feels a little bloated. And this game is nice because uh, Lost Legacy only takes about six or seven hours to complete, which is, again, great if you're going back to play a game for the first time or maybe play it again because it doesn't overstay its welcome. So yeah, I wanted to mention Uncharted The Lost Legacy because I feel like this is the perfect game to go back to. Maybe if you got burned out on the Uncharted series when it first came out, which is totally understandable, uh, but this is a great game. It's under 10 bucks, a hell of a deal. So if you haven't played it, definitely check it out. Next up is a game called Tearaway Unfolded. Now I originally played this game when it came out on the PlayStation Vita, the handheld that was a must buy game for the Vita because it used it in such interesting and unique and specific ways to the Vita. Used the camera and the, the back touch screen and all that sort of stuff. Uh, very cool game, I loved it on the Vita. And what's great is, is that it got a second life when they brought it over to the PlayStation 4. So as you can see here, this is a 3D platforming puzzle game that is really made out of paper. It has this really unique look and style to it here. And essentially what you're trying to do is go through the world, save or protect all of the people that live in this world, uh, and then you also collect confetti. But like the Vita version, this has been essentially remastered to take advantage of what is available on the PlayStation 4. So it's not exactly the same game. Uh, thankfully, they've kind of you know, tailored it to the PlayStation 4 experience. Um, and so it does use a little bit of the touch screen, like whenever you are bouncing on these drums. Um, it also uses the light, that LED on the front of the controller, so you can shine your light within the world and affect enemies and also the environment. And thankfully the gameplay and all the charm is still here on the PS4 version. It's been years since I played the Vita version, but I remember loving it and it was cool to go back and just re-experience this game in a whole new way. And also of course, you know, on a big screen. 
it's one of those games that keeps surprising you with its gameplay and also again its charm and its characters uh, and its world the solutions of the puzzles it's one of those games that kind of makes you feel smart you know what i mean like some of those puzzle games where you figure it out without a walkthrough and you're like oh yeah that makes total sense so i was having an absolute blast playing through this game again such a fun game Next up is a game that really doesn't need much intro at all because obviously it's sold very well. And to be quite honest, it's one of my favorite games on the PlayStation 4, definitely in my top three. That of course is Horizon Zero Dawn. So this game is described as a post post-apocalyptic game, meaning it takes place so far in the future that whatever catastrophe that happened to humanity back in the ancient past has been so far removed that nature and the people within it have long forgotten you know what even happened they're kind of living in sort of like an ancient world and they, they come across all of these ancient artifacts and buildings and things like that and they're not exactly sure what really happened because so much time has passed however you play as this girl who for whatever reason is able to tap into the ancient technology in a way that no one else seems to be able to do. And she starts to question what happened in the past and also what her background and her history is and her place in all of it. And so this is really an open world action RPG. And you do a lot of RPG things in here where you upgrade uh, your character, you also upgrade your weapons, uh, but plus you're also interacting with NPCs, you're going on lots of quests. There's a massively interesting story here that really had a bunch of surprises in it. I was fully engaged in what was going on in this game. Uh, as a matter of fact, when it ended, I was like, man, I could just turn around and replay this again. It's so good. So yeah, it's definitely one of my top three games on the PlayStation 4. I am eagerly waiting for the sequel that's gonna come out, I believe on the PlayStation 5 in 2021. But in the meantime, if you haven't played this game or if you're like me and it's been a couple years since you've dove into Horizon Zero Dawn, now is the perfect time to do it because you can get it on the cheap. Next up is not a game that is exclusive to the PlayStation 4, although I originally played it here. That of course is Thief. This is the 2014 version of Thief. It's actually the fourth game in the series, and it just happens to be one of my favorite stealth-based series uh, from a long time ago when I first played the, the, the original and the second one on the PC. Now, if you're not familiar with these games, basically you play as a master thief named Garrett, and you are in this city. It's a, it's a medieval city, but it's also got magic in here. It's got some mysticism. It's got some really interesting characters, but basically, yeah, this is a first person stealth game. And uh, you go around stealing stuff. You break into people's houses. You're trying to not get caught. You're knocking out guards. You're going on quests, uh, upgrading your, your, uh, your equipment and uh, the things that will help you in doing so. And for the most part, this is a really great game. I really enjoyed it quite a bit because again, it went back to that classic first person stealth style that I really enjoyed when I first played the series on the PC. Some of the downsides here, and they're completely legit, is that they really, they really shrank down the city a lot. It's actually more vertical and more compact but I think they did that because they're kind of struggling at the time with trying to fit this game on consoles with limited memory. And so it doesn't have that open world feel that, that the originals did. Um, so that's kind of a bit of a bummer. And also there's a lot of load times and load screens in this game, more than you would like. That said, the gameplay in this is absolutely excellent. Now I do want to say though that I think a lot of people may have skipped this and then went on to play the Dishonored series, which came out also on the PS4 and that whole generation. And I would say that those are technically better games, but if you wanna see kind of where all that started and where a lot of the influence came from, check out Thief on the PS4 and also Xbox One and PC if you happen to have that. Again, it's a really cheap game now and it's a lot of fun. Next up is a game that is close to my heart. That is King's Quest, the complete collection. 
So obviously you see it here on the PS4, but it also came out on other consoles as well. So see if you can get it on those for uh, under 10 bucks. But basically what's going on here, it is a reimagining of the King's Quest series, well, or the King's Quest franchise, I should say, uh, for a, an entirely new audience. Now, originally this game was released episodic, almost like the Telltale games, where you you get a, a new chapter every couple months or so. But the nice thing is now that you can go and you can get the complete collection, which has all five chapters already on the disc. And again, for you know $10 or less. In this collection, you'll play the five stories of King Graham throughout his life as he tells that story to his young granddaughter. And this really reminds me of the story framing device used in the movie Princess Bride, if you're familiar with that. Now, the original Sierra games released back in the 80s and 90s were more traditional point and click games, but that's not what this is. This is a more modern take or reimagining of those King's Quest games. And so in this game, you're controlling King Graham in the third person with the thumbstick, again, like a modern game, but you're still solving puzzles. Uh, you also engage in quick time events, which yeah, you know, I can take it or leave it, but they're not too bad here. You're also interacting with NPCs. And so it just has a very modern, very familiar vibe to it. So yeah, this is a cool collection that I feel got left a little bit behind and forgotten about for some reason. It's probably because we haven't seen a proper King's Quest game in decades. I think the last one was really King's Quest VIII. And that was probably, what, was that 1998 or something like that? So I don't know. I don't know if it was necessarily what the hardcore King's Quest gamers were looking for, the fans, you know, but I do think it's a, a decent one and it's a nice homage and reboot of that franchise. So again, for under 10 bucks, check it out. Here we have Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This game blew me away when it first came out. And then when I went back and was recapturing the gameplay footage for this video, well, I actually got so sucked into it again that I just finished it in one night. It's so good. So the premise of this game is that you play as two sons whose father is dying and needs some medicine badly. So you uh, you hear that there is this ancient tree in the middle of nowhere that has this water of life. And so the two of you set out to try to get that and bring it back and save your dad from dying. Now that story and premise doesn't sound that interesting, but the way that this game implements that and the things that they go through are really cool. So to start off with, the controls on this game are very unique. Essentially what you do is you control both brothers at the same time, each of them assigned to a thumbstick on your controller. So for instance, the older taller brother in blue is assigned to the left thumbstick. And then the younger brother is assigned to the right thumbstick. And then each of their actions are assigned to the triggers right next to each one of those thumbsticks. Does that make sense? So essentially what you're doing is you're controlling both of them at the same time. And it's really weird to get used to when you first start this game because that is not how this usually works. But after about 30 minutes or so, I think you're gonna get it because it feels very natural and it's not too awkward to be honest with you because essentially you kind of work in tandem with each other to try to solve all these different puzzles and get around in the environment. And so really this game is all about these two brothers trying to work together. And in many ways, it's about you trying to get your thumbs and your trigger fingers to work together in very, you know, kind of unique and interesting ways. And each one of these brothers has a slightly different skill set. So for instance, the older brother, well, he's taller, so he can actually lift his brother up when he needs to. He's also stronger, so he can pull uh, levers that maybe the younger brother can't. And then the younger brother is smaller so he can fit through cracks. This game also surprises with some excellent characters and some surprising twists in the story. And I wanna mention that the graphics and the level design is absolutely top notch. Now it may not necessarily be, you know, the best that you've seen of this generation, but trust me, there are some levels in this game where you just stop and you go, wow. As a matter of fact, there's one level in this game I'm not gonna show it because I don't wanna spoil it, but I will give you a hint. It's, it basically takes place after a massive battle with giants. 
And that's all I'm gonna say about it, but if you played this game, you remember how memorable that level is, how unique it was, how disturbing it was. It's, again, just such an interesting game. And it's only about three to four hours long. So if you haven't played Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, I highly recommend it. Next up is a racing game that I've recommended on my channel before, and now that it's $10 or less on the PlayStation 4, I figure it is a good time to kind of bring it back here and mention it again, that of course is Grip. So Grip is a spiritual successor to the game Roll Cage that most of us played on the PlayStation 1. And I was a huge fan of that game. And when I heard that Grip was gonna be coming out, I immediately was sold on this game. And you know, for the most part, I think it really lives up to that. And so the premise of this game is that you race a vehicle that doesn't necessarily have a top or bottom. So often you are driving upside down, all while trying to pick up power-ups and weapons very similar to Wipeout. And there's a great sense of speed and chaos in this game. And the level design is designed to take advantage of the unique style of this vehicle that you happen to be racing. And so there's a lot of twists and turns and jumps, and you will be kind of rolling up onto the ceiling. You can just go all over the place. Again, chaotic is a great way to describe this game. It's not necessarily the easiest game I think to get into, but it can be super fun when you get in the zone. And the game has been patched and updated several times based on community feedback. And so I do feel like the game has gotten better. Um, I know some people still don't think it's quite as good as the original roll cage i you know i actually think it is i think that the updated graphics and also the updated speed the frame rate all that sort of stuff i think is a fair trade-off in this game i actually really do like it and again for you know 10 bucks or less yeah definitely check it out Next up is a series that I recently got into just I believe in the last year or so, and that is Trine the Ultimate Collection. So this is currently for sale at GameStop for just $4.99, which again is a hell of a deal. In this collection, you get four complete games and what they are, well, you see it here. They are 2D puzzle platforming games where you swap between three different characters. So you have a wizard, you have a rogue, and you have a fighter. The wizard can use magic to move objects as well as conjure a box when needed. Uh, the rogue, well, she can shoot a bow and arrow as well as create rope bridges. And then the fighter, I think he's undead, at least in the fourth game, he's undead. Uh, he is great at close combat. He can also use his shield to deflect projectiles shot at him. And also he can reflect light, which you'll be doing a lot, especially in the fourth game when you're trying to solve puzzles. And what makes this game unique is that you can swap between those characters at any time. And you'll be doing that a lot because all of these screens, all of these puzzles usually require multiple characters to get through them. And I have to say these games look and play excellent. I love that 2.5D graphic style that they got going on here. It's a really high quality looking game, gorgeous visuals. And again, the gameplay is super solid. It's, it's excellent. There's a ruined castle on this Heath. Maybe he's headed there. The next game is part of one of my all time favorite gaming franchises that of course is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. And the amazing thing is that this game is cheap. It's actually for sale currently right now on GameStop for 99 cents. So worth it. I should buy 10 copies just to have them. Now, if you're not familiar with the Deus Ex series, well, there's a lot to like about these games. For one, they are futuristic cyberpunk games, which I'm always a huge fan of. But what I really love about these games is the sense of choice. You have choice in the way you play it, and also how the story turns out. Let's start with gameplay. If you prefer to go in first person shooting, guns blazing, this game will totally let you do that. Or maybe you're like me where you prefer a little bit more stealthy approach. The game supports that as well. And because this is a first person cyberpunk game, well, you have these augmentations that allow you to really tailor the experience to how you want to play this game, almost like a role playing game. And for the most part, the levels will support how you want to play. So for instance, if you prefer to just sneak around through air ducts, usually there is one that you can go through, or there'll be a lot of cover if you find yourself in a firefight. 
And then the story itself will give you choices as to how you want to resolve that. Do you want to be peaceful? Do you want to be sneaky? Do you want to be generous? Again, the amount of freedom in this game is just mind boggling. Now, this is technically the fourth game in the series taking place two years after the events of Deus Ex Human Revolution, but you don't have to have played those previous games to really enjoy this one. If this game seems like it might be interesting to you and you have 99 cents, you definitely have to check it out. And then here's a game I want to talk about because I've played it a ton over the last couple years on many different platforms. That of course is Race the Sun. This game falls under the genre of Endless Runner, although as you see here, you're not actually running, you're flying a solar powered airplane. And essentially what you're trying to do is survive as long as possible before the sun sets and you lose all your energy. And like other Endless Running games, you will die in this game a lot, but that is what you're supposed to do. There is a little bit of progression in this game as you level up, you'll get power-ups that you can put into your aircraft that will help you out. And there's daily leaderboards if you want to try to climb those. But for me, this game goes into a category of games that I kind of just go back to when I have maybe just a few minutes to play or I'm looking for something that's mostly brainless. So again, if you haven't checked out Race the Sun, it's super fun and it's about $10. All right, guys, well, that is 10 games on the PlayStation 4 that you can pick up currently for $10 or less. And the PS4 has been out for many years now, so of course there are tons of other games that you should probably check out as well. Let me know which ones you think should be in the next video down below. And let me know what you think about this video. Would you like me to do it also for the Xbox One or maybe the Switch or PC? Love to know what you think. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.